important thing I think people need to understand is like, do you actually love the card culture? That's the most important question you ask yourself. If you don't, then it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. Just don't get involved. Get into something that you like. All right, everybody, here we go. We're here today with Chris Fitzgerald. How are you, sir? Good, Juice. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, we're talking today uh, about Behind the Card. It's a, a, the f movie you just got done directing. It's it's actually really nice. I, I, I actually love the video. Um, it's something that stuck out to me was everybody that was involved, but really before we get into it too much, talk to us a little bit about how you got into it, why you chose to, you know, go down this path and create is this is more like a documentary, right? Yeah, definitely. So my wife, Paula and me both created this during quarantine that, you know, the big guys like Disney, Sony all stopped putting out theatrical films. Right. So we knew there was a little niche in terms of like being a smaller player to get out and do a theatrical film. And when we thought about that um, on the back end, I'll, I'll tell you the story, essentially how we got to the car collecting side is we moved from Los Angeles to Vegas during quarantine. So I did what I, whatever good man does and goes with his wife to target. And I saw a box of cards and it happened to be a Zion inside it. And Ooh. I was able to sell that online, right. And uh, on eBay. And I was like, wow, they're going for this much when boxes are only 20 bucks. It was during the time frame. It was a little bit past prison, but there was a prison box on. I just got really lucky when I was there. It really hit her when we got there early one time and there was one other person. You don't know if they're a card collector, but they look like a flipper. So I figured it was. He was in front of me. They opened the doors. This is actually at a Walmart. They opened the doors. He looks at me. I look at him. He takes off running. So I decided to do the flipper <laughs> thing and I start running with him. <laughs> and she's like watching us run through this Walmart. We turn a corner and he doesn't make the corner and he blasts into a pile of like a racket of clothes. <laughs> All oh. over. Yelling. And uh, so like I, I went the distance on that flipper side to really showcase what you know people would do to, to get to the cards first. And right. that was the one day that Walmart didn't put cards out. So <laughs> that guy hit a, a racket of clothes with Intel <laughs> on the ground, like total movie style without even getting anything at the end of the day. So Ooh. he was on board from there. And that's when we decided to start making it. Okay. Okay. Not too bad. So you, you, you mentioned you guys moved out to Vegas and I uh -oh. guess maybe that's where the connection comes with Vegas. Dave talk about someone who in the hobby uh, he, you know, yeah. he doesn't have a very positive outlook in a lot of things. And it's very, he's a very, uh, you know, interesting individual. Um, but yeah, so was it necessary for him to be in this film that you guys created? Yeah. So you love or hate Vegas Dave, you know, right. there's, there's no way of getting around that. And, and Vegas Dave is, a, his character is bigger than life, right? Oh yeah. Um, he really pushed the boom early on that he was, he oh, was yeah. the guy that did it right with the super fractor. And then he really pushed the crash and you see that in our film. And I, I think he ended up fitting really well in a few aspects. You know, we really focused this documentary on the rise of the sports card market during the time frame of essentially, you know, 16 to 20, right? Yeah. So the boom era. And he really played a role at the beginning of that and towards the end of that and how he kind of positioned himself. So uh, on top of that, being Vegas Dave and, and, and bringing what he brings best to the movie, if you haven't seen it, you know, he brings Vegas Dave really hard. And um, a lot of people, because they hate him, that kind of gave us the villain that we needed in the film, right? And every yeah. every every film needs one. And even though this is a documentary, I hate documentaries that aren't exciting, fun, sure. twist. Right, right, and I, right. I felt like he gave us what we needed to to have the up and down to really keep you entertained throughout for sure. Before we continue, spoiler alerts for everybody that has not seen it yet. Make sure you guys go check it out. Uh, I, I know it's available on Apple uh, the Apple store. Cause that's where I watched it. I actually rented it and then I purchased it after the fact. So you could do that there. Uh, right. and I'm sure it's also on Amazon. Same way, yeah. That's how I did it on and yeah. Android too. <laughs> Thanks the for the Google double play. Play, guys. Yep. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. it, it seems like the Vegas area was a huge influence with you because I know you have Vegas Dave there. You guys just moved there. You had your first real experience with the whole sports card piece going out and buying and running you know, uh, you threw that Walmart with that gentleman, but also with Steve Aoki being there, yeah. he's housed out of Vegas and he played a huge part in this movie from what I could tell. Um, and it really, he showed that he was speaking on the behalf of the collector. How important was Steve, Steve Aoki's influence in this film? His mindset kind of at the time was understanding. So he plays a lot. He's not just a guy that goes out and buys a million dollar card, right? He has a TCG company in MetaZoo. He has a breaking company. He has invested in, in card, you know, car, local card shops and 
Uh, he's done stuff with Top. So I think people don't realize how integral he is to helping grow the space in general. Uh, he's, you know, he's uh, an investor. He's a collector. Yeah. Um, he culturally likes to clap, uh, collect Japanese things. So he threw yeah. in the Rui Hachimura and, and those and how, hey, they might not be the best guys out there, but like it speaks to him in terms of why he collects, right? And then, yeah. you know, getting in on the top side of how things happen from a branding perspective. So um, we got really lucky at the time that he, and, you know, MetaZoo wasn't out yet. He had to call his partner and, and talk through him and, and make sure that we were able to even talk about MetaZoo at the time because it was so yeah. early in filming. So um, he definitely played a big role because he's just so integral across multiple things. It allowed us to put him in different sections throughout the film, which was pretty cool. A lot of the individuals, and this is no disrespect to the individuals that were there, they're all more recently around the COVID time started collecting. Yeah. And it, it's... I. I think that there was a little bit more of that old school because by all means, Jen and I, we got in around 2019 before COVID and that was with Pokemon. And, you know, I, I, I collected sports cards all throughout my life, but not nothing serious of where I'm at now. So yeah. we're definitely not the experts ourselves or anything like that, but it feels like the individuals that were talking in, in a lot of those areas, they, they started really pushing it around the COVID time. Um, and, yeah, and I think if you look in general, you know, when it comes to online presence of card building, it was primarily most people started 18 to 2020, even yeah. though they were collecting prior. Okay. Just in general, I think 80% of people on the internet right now started around that time frame. So it's really hard to find those guys. Like a lot of people are like, we had Beckett, why not Dr. Beckett, right? We tried to get Dr. Beckett, it just didn't work. COVID reasons during the time frame scheduling, he wasn't there. You know, we couldn't make it work and that would have been awesome to have. Um, so I, I hear you loud and clear on that piece. I think as well from a theatrical version, we're looking at the masses. And one of the big reasons why I created this film is I want individuals to join the, the community that we all love. Right. And I wanted them to be able to like put a face out there when they're researching, you know, when they come across, like when they look at breakers, like it had to be a top five breaker and Leighton sports card is a top five breaker, I would say out there. Right. Even still today. Uh, the reason I chose them is they're just the most kid friendly. They're not taking off their shirt. They're not cussing, you know, they're not doing a lot of things. So like, but there's a place for that too. If you want to be a yeah. crazy guy in the car collecting space, go to that breaker. I wanted to give you a path to like, at least pique your interest enough to go online and research yeah. more to find your own community. Because I, as you notice in the film, if you haven't watched the film, I give you kind of two sides of everything. You know, when yeah. we talk about Vegas Dave, he hates vintage. So we yeah. have Rob go and he talks vintage and we yeah. have them like compete against each other, but we never say which way is better. Right. We just kind of leave it up to you to go find out that that's really what I was trying to do in the film from a director standpoint. And I'm glad you brought up Rob because my next piece is talking about Rob and he made a great point. Uh, and I don't want to ruin that piece too much. And yeah, he's a little bit more of a recent collector, but he understands the hobby in the sense of, hey, I'm not going to invest a ton of money in these modern guys. I'm going to stick to vintage. And that was a breath of fresh air because one of the big things right now in the hobby is these cards that are selling that are modern, especially with, the, like, for an example, the, the most Mac recent. Jones. Yeah, the Mac I mean, Jones or just other rookie quarterbacks yeah. in general with the Trey Lance and so forth. Oh, but right. that Mac Jones that sold, say, for 100000 that that kid pull. Mac Jones might not even be the starting quarterback next year. Like, yeah, yeah it, it's it's absolutely crazy putting that much money into these quarterbacks. Same with uh, yeah. Davis Mills and so forth. So it was a breath of fresh air hearing him talk yeah. uh, and, and really talk about vintage because I, I, that's one thing that as new collectors coming into the space, they don't really look at. Or they're just focused on the model. Select 2017-2018. Wow. This is going to be absolutely uh, amazing here. Now, remember, make sure you guys stick around because about halfway through this, I'm going to announce a little something that everybody that's watching this might be interested in. So as I take these out, we'll go like this. Talk to me a little bit about your understanding of the, you know, or I guess your experience with the growth of the, the sports card hobby during COVID. Because, you know, you talked about going and buying these from Walmart and Target and so forth. Just when you first saw this, like, could you believe like what was going on yourself? Yeah, like it, it felt like a film in general, even when you're just going out during that era, right? <laughs> like trying to burning gas, driving around from site to site, you know, trying to find a box of cards just to rip because you can't buy them online at the time because that's just gambling, right? Because you're, yeah. you're seeing a blaster box for 300 bucks for a new, new blaster box is crazy. So, um, 
you know, the biggest experience for me is like once I learned everybody and we started interviewing individuals and everyone that wasn't actually in the film, we interviewed a ton of people. So I, I got a good background understanding of what was going on out there. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. We got a number there or just to prove them? This uh, a a nice colored prism. It looks like it's going to be the green, blue. Nice. And maybe white. is that white? Yeah, maybe. So that's kind of nice there. De'Aaron nice. Fox, he's playing phenomenal. So this is a pretty solid card here. Yeah, and I was like a kid in the candy store during this, you know, time frame of not just learning, but you know, I go to Rich Layton's place and he has, you know, uh, rookie signed uh, Tom Brady card right that yeah. big boys of him and you know it's i had to bite my tongue because i'm i'm there for business and i just want to be like well, how much for this card or would you ever sell this one <laughs> you know so, <laughs> you know you're like a little kid in the candy shop from that perspective for sure yeah, there are Maybe. definitely a lot of people with crazy collections that don't ever show it and it's just hidden but oh whew, sometimes you can just oh. imagine what they have bait them not tate them there <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Batum in North Norlands Nor Noel. Yeah, and hard, you know, one of the hardest parts of the film, especially an hour and a half, is finding enough B footage, which is you know like what we're doing now, putting cards up while we talk. Yeah. Um, but luckily, like everybody has a collection of fifty to hundred cards that are just bangers, right? So we were able to really push in as much, you know, uh, kind of controlling of that wow. as possible as well. Is that a little goal? Kimba uh, Walker looks bronze. like bronze at a forty nine. All right. Okay. Not, not bad. bad. Not bad. So is that is players. that is a bronze the first off the line exclusive or? You know. Uh, I don't really know. Oh yeah, this is a first off the line exclusive. Touche. It might be. That oh, might this be it, is yeah. super thick. Uh -oh. Super yeah. thick. Oh, it's Hopefully, it's a packed auto. That'd be insane. There we go. Lou Williams, we'll pull from the back just in case. Definitely hey. a little thicker for sure. There's definitely Come a something. On, something. Let's see a little Tatum here. Oh, it's, it's, upside, uh, it's upside down. Do we know what that is? Rookie Jersey Auto. John Collins. Collins. All right. Ooh. Nice. Let's go, John Collins. That's pretty dope. It was uh wow. I don't know if you call that a patch, but <laughs> napkin. Rookie auto napkin. Nice. Rookie jersey auto RJ A. Yeah. Is rookie this his rookie auto. year? I guess. Wow. Yeah. Ink clones is player worn material too. Nice. Can't be that now, nowadays, right? Player yeah. worn. It's uh pretty uh yeah it's just not doesn't happen anymore card Thanks. matches your uh your background really well too with the purple oh but yeah loot box purple <laughs> loot box purple baby <laughs> i right, said so the neon orange will be the exclusive for FOTL. Oh, this is okay. thick as well neon orange is what we're looking for for the exclusive. Yep. that's neon the datum card we want right exactly In i think this is a fakey fake oh fakey oh. fake oh 101 fake fake Nice. Surprised they put those. Kyrie the Irving line. Red. Bam out of bio. The Kyrie is out of 199. And you got the Bam out of bio. We'll see. Um, so, Chris, at what point did you think that the boom was just like just out of control, just too ridiculous? Like, like you just said, like this can't continue like this. Like, was there a point that you realized that like? Oh, everything's going just way too out of control. Yeah, I saw um, I saw 2019 Prism retail boxes go from I think 250 to 350 to 600 in one week uh, wow. at the card shop. And I was I remember because I was like there was seven of them there, and I was like I, I bought two of them at 350, and I I remember going in. I'm just like wow, it's been like literally less than a week, and I, I could have flipped those for almost 50% more if I just bought them a couple of days ago. There's a Tatum. There's but, uh, a Tatum. That, and also, you know, when you got, you know, Bull Bull hitting 20 points in a preseason game or something back then, right? <laughs> um, you know, it's just, that, that gets wild, right? And um, when, when, I, when I couldn't afford, 
you know, to buy cards myself, I would say. Like I like 2017 for because I was a Chiefs fan before the Chiefs were cool. So, you know, going after Priest Holmes. But, you know, when Blasters got up over 300 plus, you know, it, it just I felt like I couldn't buy a box. Um, and at that point, and I was buying, you know, good, good amounts of, I, I would say cost wise, good amounts. And I felt like if I got pushed out of the market, it was getting frothy. Right. Um, yeah. mm. um, when I was on the road, it was more about, you know, the high, I was just living the moment of the hype with everyone. Right. So I <laughs> and I, I didn't, I wasn't collecting during those two months. So I wasn't really focused on what was going on in the marketplace during that time frame. Mm. So speaking of potentially, purchasing boxes and not being able to in the the film there was a discussion a little part about fractional ownership i think jeff wilson brought that up fractional ownership right now um, especially with crypto and a lot of those other things that are going on too is just not seeing the best and the growth that it was expected there was a lot of yeah. like uh liquid marketplace for instance just they're they're not doing too well and a couple other spots what is uh, what is your thoughts on that particular piece? Do you think it's something that can be around for the long haul, uh, or and it's like maybe right now is not the right time for it? Yeah. So, you know, when you think about like the masses that need to see a theatrical film, like just the industry, card industry itself isn't going to carry a film from a theatrical perspective, right? So, we uh, we looked at it as okay, the sneakerheads were already coming in collecting. One of the other ways to get individuals to come in is going to be through um, NFTs, investing, that kind of thing, right? This would give individuals that maybe wanted to have a piece of a card that they didn't really want to hold themselves to get them in to start collecting. And that's where Fractional would showcase. But again, it was like showcase for about three minutes of the, the whole hour and a half film. Um, and we also had Vegas Dave in there saying, I would never do, I would never do Fractional shares, right? Yeah. Like, I agree too. I, I would never do it myself. I want to own the card. Yeah. Um, but I felt like it was good overview for some people to like pique their interest to come research more. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, usually those types of cards are the big bangers that have standed the test of time. Right. Um, so in reality, I don't feel like hopefully everyone, you know, they don't get hit as hard and a downturn as the rest. And then right. they only own a fraction of it. So they're not like pissed and they leave the marketplace. Um, so that's the reason I showcased it that way. Um, and why we did very little on it, I guess you could say. Ooh, there it is. The orange. There it is. Come on, B. 76ers. Oh, your, it's your team. Oh, this would have been amazing. That's it, right? Punchy level boxes (laughs) and saying that would have been the biggest hit. (laughs) This would have been amazing. (laughs) Seven out of nine, number one overall draft pick. Oof. Could you imagine Oof. opening the first box of first off the line during that year and hitting this right away? Do you would have we would have been losing our minds? Would have been losing <laughs> like our that Mac minds. Jones black prism card that we talked about, right? All right. <laughs> Oof. You know, I hate to admit it, but I think Dave, that's the only time I'll agree with Vegas Dave about uh, fractional ownership and things like that. <laughs> See, there's a few times in the film you might, you I might know, agree with I know. the guy. Like, and, uh... like him. <laughs> and then he, then he gives those, like pounds his chest. He goes with the ego, and it's like, all right, never mind. I want to <laughs> karate chop him at times, but no, he made a lot of good points. He, he did, did make he a did. lot of good points. He's a smart guy, right? I mean, and he from a marketing I mean, yeah. perspective, he knows how to talk, right, to make the masses yeah. love or hate him because. Whether you love them or hate them, you still you still watch them, right? At that point, so oh, I think wait just, a minute. he's a marketing genius. Is that a white? Wait a minute. What is that? Sideways oh, card. Sideways. Markel Fultz. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, oh, X Factor. <laughs> That's hilarious. Could you imagine? <laughs> so before we get into this last pack, everybody that is watching this today, we're going to be giving away this blaster. Make sure you leave a comment below. I'm also going to have a, a pinned comment to who is behind the card's Instagram page. Make sure you give them a follow, and I'll have a, a link to our Instagram accounts as well. Make sure you give us a follow, and then we're going to pick a random winner for that blaster. It's a 2017, 2018 uh, uh, what is this? What am I? Knucklehead? Is this prism? Yeah, optic. My bad. Optic. I'm a knucklehead. Ooh, optic. Optic. I couldn't find the logo. A little optic action. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. 
All right, and here we go. Have we hit two patches or three patches? We we've hit basically we've hit our RPA. And, um, a, and the is, Markle, in the Fultz patch, right? In uh, yeah. the Fultz patch, so and we hit a patch auto or patch. I no, we we we, we hit another patch. patch. Yeah. Yeah. We did hit the other patch. Yeah. yeah. So here we go. This is the last pack magic. Let's see what we get here. Okay. I think this is a fakey fake. Yeah. So the hits, the hits going to be behind it. I'm going to grab it here. We got Ryan Anderson and we got Reggie Jackson. Ooh. Okay. Let's see. Blue. Uh, I know who that is. Who is it? I'm going to say it's Jay Crowder. Ooh. Let's see if you're right. Jay Crowder. There you go. Out of 299. But I'm telling you, you got some decent hits here. You got the John Collins. You got the John. The John Collins was awesome. You got the the Tatum yeah, rookies. Yeah. That would have been nice rookie. if that was a red Tatum there, right? Right behind yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> this would have been nice if this was a Tatum. Yeah. But wow. The John Collins. Wow. RPA out of 99. I appreciate you swinging by. Um, th there's right now, and this is why I kind of want you to do. Like a number two, I would love to see like maybe uh, uh, an, another one and the one after that. I think you're on to something here. I think this is something yeah. that the hobby really needs. And it's also cool um, to go through and see the process and, and hear about the, you know, a hobby that we're a part of getting, you know, this, this film treatment. It, it's really nice. But one of the big things are break, uh, breakers, distributors, and the secondary market. You talked about breakers a little bit and you talked about the secondary market a little bit in this film. Um, I, I don't remember too much about the distributors, but that is a huge piece right now. Yeah. And I know we, we kind of talked about it and this film is definitely not supposed to be a hit piece. And I, I completely understand. And I'm on the same page with that. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily a hit piece. They're just like, if we are truly trying to set the stage for people coming into the hobby, I think transparency is key. And there's yeah. a lot of things going on right now with breakers, the secondary market and distributors where it's, it's in flux right now. Do you think if you if you had the opportunity to make a second or third one, would those be avenues that you potentially could go down? Yeah, like I just give you a little taste of those sections, right? And you, you just want much more of them. <laughs> right. Um, and like, like Rich Layton says, you know, sometimes he has to pay going rate even to distributor to get yeah. paid just to get, you know, boxes and he has to have them because he breaks. Well, yeah. why? Tell us more about why. What does that mean? Yeah. Like what's the negotiating look like with the distributor? Uh, one of the card shop owners showed me literally um, at the time, I think it was uh, select football came out. I want to say, um, and maybe a hybrid and literally he got three boxes and then he like showed me, he goes, here's what they sent me today. And here's my receipt from yesterday. And it's like $250 more. And I'm like, that's crazy. Right. And we could have, you know, kind of showcased stuff like that. Right. Um, I wanted people to go back to channels like yours and, and kind of research more and find their community of where they fit before they got too involved in, in kind of understanding what the ups and downs were there. Um, so that's in, you got to remember in a, in a feature film for the masses, you have to move in and out of sections quickly. You can get bored right. very quickly. Right. So like right. the grading section, people, a lot of times are like, why didn't you have, you know, PSA or SGC along with Beckett. And it's like, well, they all three from a masses perspective, they all three are identified the same. So just be repetitive at this point to have more than one in it. Right. Sure. Um, with theatrical film. So um, there's a lot of room to do a second one. I mean, there's enough in the, in the last year to almost do one. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris, everybody else. We'll talk to you soon. Deuces. Deuces.